Hey photographers, if you are about to record video on the Sony a7 IV and it's your first time, let me give you a quick rundown of the best settings to use. And this will get you up to speed and ready to record in about seven minutes. If you could stick around, I'll also share some advanced tips, including using external audio or video recorders. The description includes chapter markings. Now, full disclosure, I'm not sponsored and I have purchased all of the equipment you'll see in this video except for this lens, Sony's full frame cinema series 16 to 35 millimeter, which they have loaned me for this video. I'll get to that later. Sony has not provided any financial incentive or support and did not review either the script or the video before posting. Uh, and before we start, let's talk memory cards. I recommend that you use CF Express Type A cards with 700 megabyte write speed. Those will be issue free regardless of your settings. And for the settings I'm going to recommend to get you started quickly, an SDHC or SDXC card rated V30 will be suitable. With SDHC cards, your recordings will be saved in four gigabyte chunks. On SDXC, it'll be a single recording. And always back up the information on the card and reformat it before recording. Slide the caller to the video setting and the mode dial to M. Now, I know that seems like manual, but relax, you will have an automated exposure setting. I've reset the camera to its default settings. If you'd like to do that too, use Setup Menu 2, Reset, and reinitialize the camera. In this video, recorded in March 2022, I'm using firmware 1.0. On Setup Menu 9, Power Setting, use the Auto Power Off to set the temperature to high. This makes the camera less liable to turn off due to overheating. Then use Shooting Menu 1, Image Quality, File Format to set the file format to XAVCS 4K and the movie settings to frame rate 30p, the default, and the record setting to 140m 10-bit. Well, those are not the best settings available on this camera. They provide high quality for most personal and online video. And with those settings, a 64GB SD card will hold 55 minutes. Now, while we're on the topic, use Shooting Menu 2 Media Rec Media Settings to set the a7 IV to record video on the card in either slot 1 or slot 2, or to simultaneously record on both. If you choose just one slot, you can turn on Auto Switch Media to go from one card to the other without interruption. The remaining time available on both cards is displayed upper left. While recording, the current recording's length is displayed lower left. If more time is needed, you can remove the card that's not in use while recording and replace it with another. Watch in the upper left as the now full card is replaced with a new blank one. The A7IV's recording time limit is 13 hours. Use Exposure Menu 3, Metering, and set the metering mode. Now, in general, Multi provides a good overall exposure, but for specific situations, center might help a centered subject that's either brighter or darker than the rest of the scene. And if your subject is much brighter than the background, like a performer on stage, highlight will keep them from being overexposed. It also helps highlights from blowing out. Use the rear dial to set the shutter duration. And for video, I recommend 1 60th. That provides the right amount of motion blur at frame rates from 24 to 60. Then aperture, using the front dial. A relatively large aperture, say f4 or larger, provides a defocused background. A smaller aperture, like f16, captures a scene with more background focus. If the combination of shutter duration and aperture you prefer is still overexposed, even when the auto ISO is pushed all the way to the lowest ISO for video, that's 100, first close the aperture, then shorten the shutter duration. Now that may not provide satisfactory results. A short shutter duration makes motion look jumpy and a small aperture won't have a defocused background. The alternate solution is an ND filter, which screws onto the front of the lens. Now, I find most variable ND filters have a changing color cast, but they are a simple solution 
Otherwise, three to five stops should do it. Although the main menu isn't available while you're recording, the fun menu is, we'll use it to set white balance. Using auto white balance is easy, but it does not work for video. The minor shifts it makes won't be perceptible until you edit, and fixing them will prove challenging or impossible. Select one of the presets that matches your lighting, or any setting that makes the colors look natural. Custom white balance could be even better. I'll demonstrate that in the advanced section. And the fun menu also has two focus controls. For nearly everything, the default mode AFC, continuous autofocus, combined with the default wide area setting does the job, particularly with face eye detect, also on by default. And that setting is on focus menu three, face eye, where you'll find options to turn it off, select human or animal subject, and select a specific eye. Now when auto doesn't get the subject you want, use touch. The on-screen button, top right, indicates the current mode. Both spot focus and tracking can be selected. And if touch isn't on, the C4 key turns it on and off, unless you're using an external monitor, in which case it's not available. To cancel tracking, press the joystick control. If you're planning to vlog, or shoot an interview, I recommend an external mic, which I'll describe in the advanced section. If you're shooting handheld, on shooting menu nine image stabilization, which is on standard by default, is fine. But active is a little more aggressive. Selecting active also zooms or crops the shot from this to this. Now, on the other hand, when using a tripod, turn steady shot off. Otherwise, it'll make what should be a smooth pan jumpy. One final setting. On Exposure Menu 5, Color Tone, use the Creative Look to select a filter. And this is all about personal taste, so if you find one of these color settings pleasing, or if you want black and white, here's where you'll find it. Now, after you've made all of those adjustments, there's a lot of on-screen distraction. Press Disp the top of the direction control pad and select one of the other options. I prefer a clean screen with a minimum amount of clutter. Those settings provide the maximum return for minimal effort. You just press the red record key to start recording. Now, if you can spare a few more minutes, I'll provide some advanced tips. And here's what I do beyond what I just described. I find the menu key on the left awkward. Setup menu 3, Operation Customize, has custom key settings. By adjusting it for stills, it will affect both stills and video. Rear 1 setting 5 is the C4 key on the back. I change it from touch to menu. Uh, that way I don't have to move my eye from the viewfinder to open the menu. And although the red record key is fine, I prefer to start and stop with the shutter key. On the same tab, that is the last option, Rec W Shutter, which I turn on. Vloggers should use shooting menu 11 and turn on the emphasized recording displays. That's a red border on the LCD while you're recording. Now, cinematographers don't zoom much. Likely, you shouldn't either. As I mentioned at the beginning, I'm using the Sony FEC 16 to 35 millimeter cinema lens. If you're serious about video, a lens that's purpose-built for video is worth considering. Even if it's huge, heavy, and pricey, the filter mount here is 82 millimeters, and it weighs 1.3 kilos. This hood is included as well as a protective case. Now, admittedly, while this E-mount lens is designed for video, it's also designed for Sony's higher-end cinema series video cameras. It may overpower the a7 IV. A cinema lens has features not found on lenses designed for stills. Now, I'm going to provide the highlights here, but I will also post a full and detailed review of this lens. Now, there are marked rings for focus, aperture, and focal length. All three have gear teeth to allow external follow focus rigs. It has a focus clutch. When it's disengaged, it's an autofocus lens. When you pull the focus ring back, 
it switches to a linear manual focus lens that's marked from 0.28 meters to infinity. With linear focus, the ring indicates the distance. That enables you or your focus puller to change focus while recording and get an accurate position each time. The focal distance ring zooms from 16 to 35 millimeters in one quarter turn when the zoom motor switch is in manual. In the servo position, the power zoom lever on the left side adjusts the focal length. There's a high and low speed setting. Now the aperture on this lens is not measured in f-stops but in t-stops. The exposure at a specific f-stop, which measures the size of the aperture, may be different between two lenses. T-stops, which measure the amount of light transmitted, will be identical. With this switch, select whether the aperture ring turns smoothly, the usual preference for video, or with click detents. And there's also an iris lock. Mostly it prevents you from accidentally selecting auto. Now, between this lens, the a7 IV sensor, and the ability to record 10-bit with 422 color subsampling, the quality of image you'll get on the a7 IV is exceptional. And it is a wide-angle lens. So if you need to zoom in a little further than the lens allows, the a7IV's resolution means that for video, you could zoom in with little quality loss. Shooting menu 10, zoom, may be useful. Change the zoom range to clear image zoom, then select zoom. Use the on-screen buttons or the control pad to adjust the focal length. One caveat, this setting overrides the face detect autofocus feature. For improved color reproduction, I set a custom white balance. It's not needed in the studio where I know the Kelvin setting for my lighting and set the appropriate K value. But when I don't, I capture and set a custom white balance. Scroll down to one of the three custom positions and navigate over to the set button. Point at a neutral gray or white card. For greater control over exposure, press the right side of the control pad to set a manual ISO. This has two advantages. The exposure won't change when the lighting does, so viewers will see a brighter scene when your performer turns on the light. And you can create a darker or brighter look. And although your eye is likely a good judge, there are a few additional tools to measure the light in a scene. The display carousel includes a histogram. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't display while you're setting the ISO. But many videographers use Zebra to set exposure as it can be more precise about the exact exposure on a specific object. From the fun menu, turn Zebra on, and as a general practice, most like to have the luminance value of white skin at about 70% darker skin tones would have lower preferred values. Using a custom setting with the standard at 70 and the range at 5, those are the defaults, you can set an exact exposure for human skin. Adjust the ISO until the zebras indicate that the exposure is now 70 for your subject. When exposure is set, turn them off as they can be distracting. The A7IV's autofocus is good enough that you likely won't need to use manual, but let me show you a few options. There's a visual guide for manual focus. Peaking. Press C3 to switch to manual, then use the fun menu to turn on peaking. The fun menu can also set the peaking level, but the default white outline can be hard to see. On focus menu 5, you'll find four color options. As you adjust the focus ring on the lens, the peaking outline will show you the edges of the focused object. Or use the fun menu to turn on a second focus option, the new focus map. Blue's behind, yellow's in front. Objects that are in focus don't have a color overlay. I use an external monitor, in this case, because the screen is larger, which makes detail and focus easier to see. The Atomos Inferno is also an external recorder, which can record using Apple's ProRes codec for higher quality. Setup menu 12 has the external monitor settings. By default, it's 4K60. By default, the LCD is blank when an external monitor is connected. 
menus and overlays display on the output. For a clean display, use HDMI info display to turn off the menu. Then both screens are active, but menus and overlays appear only on the LCD. The HDMI output settings, not the HDMI resolution, changes the output resolution of the clean display, but not the frame rate, which remains at 60. Alternate frame rates can be selected. First use Rec Media during HDMI output to disable internal recording, which activates 4K output set. Then select 30 or 24 frames. Now I also I purchased a small rig cage, which makes mounting accessories like external monitors, mics, and on-camera lights easier. I also bought the small rig HDMI cable clamp. That stops the cable from being accidentally disconnected. The A7 IV can run from a USB-C power delivery power supply. So I swapped cards several times and had no issues recording for over three hours, either with power, although the battery was already low when I started, or with overheating in a 21 degrees Celsius studio. Setting the power off temp to high should enable you to record for at least two hours, even at 25 degrees Celsius. Audio is crucial to good video. As I said, the internal mic is suitable for ambience recording. For anything else, I'd recommend an external mic. The A7 IV has a 3.5mm mic input and headphone output for monitoring and uh, playback checks. <laughs> the input can be useful for either a wired or wireless mic kit. The Sennheiser mic sits in the cold shoe. This Ceramonic kit supports two transmitters with a single on-camera receiver. Now, for greater flexibility and higher quality sound, Sony has several XLR adapter kits, most of which include a camera-mounted shotgun. <laughs> they use the multi-interface shoe and don't need power or audio cables, and some support 24-bit digital recording in camera. I do find that slightly awkward, and under most circumstances, don't want to pull the audio cables back too and have them dangling from the camera. I prefer and recommend the greater flexibility of external recording. An external recorder mixer like this Tascam DR70D is also the less expensive solution. I hope this helps and I hope your shoot goes well. If you have questions or have your own tips to share, I do read and reply to all relevant questions and civil comments. And if you're inclined to support me by becoming a member, or if you just want to subscribe, there's a button that makes that super easy to do. And thanks for watching. Stay safe.